Okay, so to start this video out, um, obviously we're talking about quadratic transformations, um, but really fast, here's an extra credit opportunity uh, before we get you know real deep into this. So obviously we know about um, vertex form, right? Vertex form uh, is given to us right here. Okay, so f of x is equal to a times x minus h all squared plus k. Um, I'm asking you, how does this form, right, which looks a little bit different, we do see that we have the same k, but how does this form uh, relate to the conventional uh, vertex form? Obviously, like always, email me your proposed solutions uh, like you would with any opportunity of extra credit um, like this. So now let's get into the video. So how do transformations work um, with quadratics? And before we get into that, let me just put a new slide here. Let's do that. Okay, so before we get into that, so we know what vertex form looks like. And vertex form, it so happens, um, is the easiest way to tell what transformations are occurring relative to the parent function, right? So the parent function being, um, this guy here, f of x, or here we'll use p of x for parent, right? Why not? So the parent function quadratic or the parent quadratic function uh, simply being p of x equals x squared, right? So if I've got, you know, my conventional Cartesian plane, right? So x, f of x, um, the parent function, of course, just looks like your literal run-of-the-mill uh, parabola. Right now, depending on different transformations that make us look like this, right, we may be shifted to the right, shifted to the left, up, down, uh, reflected, stretched vertically, shrunk vertically, etc. Just like what we saw with um, uh, absolute value functions, right? We had something very similar with absolute value functions. So with absolute value functions, and I'll just say a of x we had something very similar uh, to what we see here in our conventional uh, vertex form except i want to say these are the letters that we used right so we know this was our vertical stretch uh, this was horizontal uh, shift left to right and this shifted us up or down we also know that when a was greater than zero we opened upwards, right? And when A was less than zero, meaning when A was negative, um, we opened downwards, or we also called that reflection across uh, the x-axis, okay? And this is no exception to any of that, okay? So this guy right here, A, represents our uh, vertical stretch factor or shrink. I'll put stretch or shrink. Okay, um, it also tells us if we're being reflected across the x-axis, right? And this happens when a is less than zero, just like it does over here. Um, then we have, you know, our horizontal shift left or right. Okay, and then, of course, this value k uh, makes us go up or down. Okay, so not a whole lot new um, in this video, right? So we've got some examples that we see here. So here is the parent function. We'll just call him f of x. And let me write a little bit more bold here. So parent function uh, just looks like this here in red, right? Just like what we saw a second ago. Okay, the transformation, so looking at g of x here, for example, right? g of x, well, we're shifted down uh, by three, right? Because relative to uh, what we know about transformations, right, we have a minus three here. So that means we go down by three. And then of course there for H, for our horizontal, it's like if we have a zero, right? And we see that example right here in this little graphic, okay? And let's look at another one. 
So here in blue, uh, we see that h of x is being shifted up by 2 relative to the parent function. And we see that plain as day. We still have the same idea of, you know, so a is like 1, x minus h, all squared, plus what we know is k, right? Which means we're shifted upwards by 2. Okay, so simple, simple stuff. Um, not anything new here. Okay, so now we're going to be dealing with um, horizontal, right? So here again is the parent function. Okay, and let's look at not the parent function. So g of x, we're shifted to the right by 2. Okay, and we notice something. Parabolas always have vertical lines of symmetry or axes of symmetry. Okay, and our axis of symmetry always happens. So we know this point right here is called the vertex. Okay, and our vertex always happens at h comma k, or in this case for us, uh, 2 by 0. Right, so that just means our axis of symmetry is, of course, right here, wherever h is at. We see where symmetrical can be split evenly, perfectly down the middle, up and down uh, at x equals 2. So we would say that our axis of symmetry is always uh, at x equals h, whatever h is. And in this case, x is positive 2. Right. So looking at the next example, uh, we have h of x now. And obviously, we're being shifted to the left by 3. And let me use not that color. Let's use, let's use green. Why not? And maybe not so. There we go. So we'll use green. And we see that we're right here. Okay. And our line of symmetry obviously exists uh, at our h value of our vertex. Our vertex is simply negative 3 by 0. We haven't been shifted up or down or anything. So our axis of symmetry would be at x equals negative 3. Okay, so simple, simple stuff. Um, so now we've got some non-rigid examples. And of course, non-rigid means... Well, you remember from geometry, non-rigid means we have a change in area. Um, we're not simply just moving around. We're occupying more and or less space. Uh, so here we see the parent function, um, f of x equals x squared in black. Okay, so the parent function is here in black, denoted with these little arrows. Okay, and in red, we have a stretch uh, horizontal, or my bad, vertically by a factor of two. So this is what we've got here in red. We have um, a times x minus h all squared plus k, right? And a for us this time is two. Of course, we're not shifted anywhere to the right or the left, and we're also not shifted up or down. So this is all redundant right here. We don't need to say all that. That's why we can just say 2x squared, uh, which is what we've got here. Okay, and we see that we got skinnier, for lack of a better word, right? Because we're being stretched uh, vertically. We're being stretched or pulled vertically. Our rate of change is greater for every instance of x. Okay, so we're increasing faster, right? Then we see... An example of a vertical shrink here in blue, uh, albeit it is kind of counterintuitive, okay? But it's like we're being shrunk inwards, flattened downwards, right? That's why we say vertical shrink. Vertical shrink by a factor of one-fourth, right? So we would say uh, one-fourth is A times X minus zero all squared plus zero again. And this one-fourth is a vertical shrink uh, by a factor of one-fourth. 
Okay, whereas back over here, we had a vertical stretch by a factor of two. Okay, and this all has to do with this simple fact, right? So if it's a vertical stretch, and I don't like how it's writing so skinny like that. If it's a vertical stretch, that's because A is greater than one, right? If it's a vertical shrink, right? That's because uh, zero is less than, A is less than one. So we have a fraction. Okay, and again, nothing new. We've seen this before. Uh, here we have some more examples of stretches or shrinks, except these are a little bit goofier. Right, so in blue, we see g of x. We're being stretched by a factor of 4 this time. Well, you might be wondering, well, duh, that's a 2 right there, right? But 2x all squared, well, of course, that means 2x times 2x again because that's what it means to square something right so we end up with 4x squared which means a equals 4 and therefore uh, we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 4 okay so that means we're increasing 4 times faster than the parent function shown here in black okay and Looking at our next example, h of x here, right? Well, that is equivalent to 1 fourth x times itself again, right? Which, of course, would be 1 16th x squared. So this means we have vertical shrink now uh, by a factor of 1 16th. Okay, and I should have used green, but whatever, I already chose red. Christmas colors. Okay, so now let's get into reflections. Uh, straightforward here. All we're doing is just reflecting because of this negative, because A is now less than zero, we're reflecting across uh, the x-axis. So for example, our parent function is in black, right? Right here, denoted by the arrows. Um, when we just throw a negative in there, well, now it becomes, instead of f of x equals x squared, well, we throw a negative in there, right? That would give us the orange that we see right there. And, of course, that's going to make this be reflected across the x-axis because now a uh, is less than 0. Okay, and likewise with these other ones. Okay, so not going to delete you on on that so now let's look at some actual examples um so first off let's look at example a here uh we have some examples of stretches and shrinks uh so the parent function right so the parent function is f of x equals and i'll write that over here so i'm going to put p of x equals x squared right well, of course, that means, for example, whenever x is 2, y is 4. So x is 2, y is 4. That's where the parent function would go. And we see that we're increasing much faster than that here uh, with g of x, with what we see here, right? When x is 2, well, y is off the chart. Well, what about when x is 1? Well, when x is 1 for the parent function, y is also 1, right? So again, we're increasing how much faster? Well, three times faster. So that tells me a, a is likely to be equal to 3. So that means our likely candidate for our function of g of x is equal to 3x squared. Likewise, here in the next example, well, I guess I should go in order, uh, b, right? So normally on the parent function, um, whenever x is, let's say, uh, like we have here, 5, Wait, what is that supposed No, my bad. That's supposed to be x equals 6. When x is 6, y should be 36. Okay, but instead, when x is 6, y is equal to 1. Okay, so that means a, in this case, must be 1 over 36. And that's the only way that that works. We should have h equals 1 over 36. Well, 
uh, times x squared. And when we plug in a 6 for that, right, when we plug in a 6 for that, 6 squared is 36. 36 times 136, well, that gives us the 1 that we're supposed to have. Okay, so you can see where we're going with this. And I'll just keep using blue, use blue over here. So now we see that a must be less than zero because we're opening downwards now, right? And whenever x is two, uh, y is also two, right? Except negative two, right? So that tells us, so the parent function, right? When x is two, we should be at four, not at negative two. So that tells me that a must be equal to negative one half. Okay, because we're we have a reduction in our rate of increase, so that means uh, there's no function name here. I'm just going to call it y of x. That means y of x is simply negative one half x squared. Okay, and our last example uh, graphically here, we of course see that whenever x is one, we're already at nine, and we already know when x is one, y should also be one. So that means a must be equal to 9. We have a vertical stretch factor of 9. So we must have um, k uh, is equal to 9x squared. Okay, and now we've got some more super fun examples here that are not being given to us graphically. Um, but of course, we see we have reflection across the x-axis because of the negative, And the 4 stretches us vertically. So we're going to say reflection across x-axis, uh, vertical stretch by 4, right? We're obviously being shifted left by 3 and up by 2. Simple, simple stuff, man. Simple, simple stuff. Okay, here, vertical stretch by uh, 2 since a is greater than 0 and greater than 1, right? Um, we're being shifted left by 1 and down by 4. Okay, so that does it for this video. Uh, let me know if you need anything either via email or stop by my classroom. Let me know that way. Otherwise, goodbye.